we're out of the BrainMaster discovery software, and now I'm going to use NeuroGuide. I happen to have a NeuroGuide uh, icon on my desktop that I can use. Uh, your computer, you may have to use your start computer menu. But however you start NeuroGuide, it comes up, and uh, you then get the beginning screen for NeuroGuide. And I like to expand it. Similar to EDF browser now, in NeuroGuide, we're going to go File, Open, and then we're going to go all the way down to EDF, European Data Format. Whenever you're reading the basic discovery files, which are written by the BrainMaster software, NeuroGuide is then going to read in an EDF file. So I've chosen File, Open, EDF, and now I have the NeuroGuide file browser. It starts out looking in a place called NeuroGuide, and that's not where I need to be. Where I need to be is Computer, Local Disk C, Brain M.20, Studies D, there it is, that means Studies Discovery, and now I have my online discovery files and I see TV111. So I open that subdirectory, TV111, training video. And again, here are my three EDF files. I have my first two minutes, eyes closed. I have my second two minutes, eyes closed. And I have my eyes open, two minutes. So similarly to when we read into EDF browser, we're going to go ahead and pick this Session 1, run number 2, eyes closed, and we hit the load button, and then the file will start to load into NeuroGuide. Next we get the EDF parameters file, and what we need to do is go down to Discovery to tell it that it is a Discovery amplifier, and then we're done. It's already figured out that the reference is linked ears, so we can leave this alone. Having picked Discovery, we next just hit OK. Now the EEG has been read in. You can see the EEG behind us, but we have to finish up some subject information here. It did load in the name, training video, uh, put in the birth date that I had typed in, which we'll leave. Here's an area for age. I'm going to type in a number there for the age. Then we have the eyes closed or eyes open condition. And we're going to state that this is eyes closed. We even see that in the EEG ID, eyes closed. We see the date of the recording here, December 9th, 2009. We see 12.09.09 as the date of the test. And we need to do one small thing here, which is to type 20, so it says 2009. That's a little Y2K thing going on between the EDF file format and NeuroGuide. The EDF file format only encodes the last two numbers, so we type that in and we're ready to go. So now we hit OK, and you can add more information if you want. You can put subject information, handedness, technician name, doctor's name, medications, comments. These will all be stored in the NeuroGuide file that's created. So having picked eyes closed, fixed the date, put in an age, we now press OK. So here's the EEG read into NeuroGuide. It's important to visually inspect it first, make sure that we're comfortable with how it looks, look for obvious problems, and this basically looks like a reasonably good file. I don't see anything that stands out as a particular problem. And um, we then can scroll through the file if we like, left to right. And we're seeing the various alpha activity. We're seeing waxing and waning. We're seeing changes in state. But this basically looks like a very good EEG recording. Everything looks the way it should. So we can proceed. Uh, after this to do a little bit of analysis if we want. So what's typically done 
in order to analyze the records is to pick the sections that we think are typical and representative and use those to generate a report. Now in this page I don't see anything that looks terribly unusual. We do see a little bit of delta activity going on in the front and in particular at F3 I do see a certain amount of things that look a little bit like delta but I think that's probably part of the recording. So I take my left mouse button and sweep out a nice area. There I've swept out about four seconds and what we've done then is let it turn pink showing that it's selected. We then move along to another part of the recording, look for another part that we feel is representative without trying to avoid things in particular. Um, we want to see a, a mixture of slow activity and fast activity so I'll grab this chunk here. Then we'll move along a little further, again inspecting it, looking for things that make sense. I'll grab this portion here uh, and let it go. And um, having picked that much, I've now picked 13 seconds. In the NeuroGuide window under edit time, it now says 13 seconds. Now I'll show you that. Right there. Okay. Always pick at least 10 seconds of clean EEG before you use the automatic selection algorithm. And that's what I'm going to do next. And we'll watch this box as I do it. We have 13 seconds there and I'm going to use edit and then I'm going to go automatic selection. Edit automatic selection. That now brings up a selection control box which I'll bring up here. I'm going to just hit OK. It has a cutoff multiplier of 1 and I'm going to leave it at 1. That means it's going to choose typical EEG based on what I picked. It has a window of 0.25. I'm going to leave those as default. And when I press OK, let's watch what happens to the edit time. It's 13 seconds now, and I'm going to press OK. Now it's 1 minute and 20 seconds. That means the computer has chosen 1 minute and 20 seconds out of the 2 minutes and we see that it has rejected this area of activity which has a lot of this more excess mid-range activity and it's generally rejecting areas that don't line up exactly with what I had seen in my choice. So you do want to be careful, make sure you're comfortable with how the selection is being made. I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, operate uh, and uh, look at a report and see what the report looks like based on these recordings.